a scrap heap. It was actually a haul away. A customer bought a like a new washer dryer. It was like a rental, and this was in the basement. He asked if we could remove it. And I said, um, yeah, okay, I will. So this is a 110-720-5700. Let me see if I can find the serial number. So my friend Bob looked at it, and he said that this was like a step below the Lady Kenmore. And it is a Sud Saver, guys, see? So it's a, whoa, 110-720-5700W with a serial number of C1460187. Now am I correct, guys, that the, the first two digits of the model is the year? I don't remember. Anyways, I'll have to look that up and see what year it is. But this one's definitely pretty old. Anyways, let's look at the panel. As you can see, it has its own detergent dispenser. It also has solenoids for the fabric softener and the liquid chlorine bleach. It has this cool, like, adjustable water level. And we have the knits, pre-soak, pre-wash, normal second rinse permanent press and then we have soak only soak and wash it's got hot wash warm rinse cold wash cold rinse warm wash warm rinse and then cold wash warm rinse oh and there's also the hot cold on this side i missed that one and then you have your second rinse switch oh, it's either on or off well evidently it was right it's a second rinse thing so uh, this one does have like kind of like a basic roto swirl, but it's a super roto swirl. I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more exciting. This is the extra large capacity tub, but unfortunately, it does have a huge rusty. There is a nail there that I pulled out, and well, that was that. Other than that, it was actually in really good condition. This did a lot of sitting and not a lot of using, so. Another thing to mention about this washer is it does have that real skinny drive belt on it. Um, and I haven't done a thing to it yet. All I've done to this machine is I washed it out once just to get like the debris out of it. And I uh, tightened the belt just a little bit because it was kind of a little slow off the gate. That said, I'm going to do my laundry in this washer and let's just see what it does. I'm going to do my first load is going to be my work pants. I'll probably put five or six pair of my fleece line dickies, some soap, and we'll see what happens. Well, guys, that's six pair. I feel like it's a bit overloaded, but probably not. I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to do like a 12 minute wash. Warm wash, warm rinse, no extra rinse, like highest level, and then, uh, yeah, the normal cycle. I already said that. I'm going to put some soap in as soon as I start it. Look at that vigorous wash action. Come on, slipping belt, let's get, you can do it. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit more water.
Yeah, it's the Sunseeker valve making the awful noise. Yeah, that's what I, I just unplugged the blue wire. Should be fine now. Okay. Uh. It's fine. I was just doing a recording on it and.
Did a good job rinsing. Let me see if... So, this washer is certainly not without its fault. Um, I don't know what that thing was in the beginning where it was like not catching. I think it kind of looks like a transmission issue. Another reason why I think it might be a transmission issue is because this agitator, I believe, should kind of go into like a neutral type position when it's spinning. And it seems like it's wanting to agitate and spin at the same time. So I think either there's something going on with the wig wag where it's not engaging and disengaging fully or there's something going on with the transmission. I'll have to take a closer look at it. This is a classic example of a washing machine that that works but it's got issues and this is what you find on I guess Craigslist for free. So other than that it did a pretty good job. I mean the clothes are definitely got some weight to them that's for sure. They're, they're not spun like uh they get spun on my LG. Let me look at pants number eight. These were really, really dirty. I, I didn't show you guys, but these were very dirty when I got them. This did a pretty good job. Not too shabby.